Hi, everyone. We are going to kick off Visualizing People Networks. Everything is connected. Now it's time to see the links. My name is Shelly Hayduck, and I'm co-hosting today's event with Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today's session is all about leveraging your brain for relationships. The brain is a relational interface, so um, a, a very compelling and exciting application that a lot of our customers uh, take advantage of the brain for is to actually visualize their connections to people, to business contacts, uh, to vendors. And it's, it's quite interesting because a lot of people think of the brain in terms of just data management or file management, and it's that. But the ability to see how everything's related um, with the brain's non-associative uh, interface is, is quite compelling. So um, we're going to start uh, talking about how to build a people network and some example applications. So I have this brain here called my people network. And this is, a, to me, one of my favorite webinars, one of my favorite applications because, um, you know, you can do so much. Um, in your own brain, your personal brain, you can have a section for family. So if you want to have your, um, you know, your mother, your spouse, your friends, um, you know, that could be another connection, or your sister, your children, so I'll just put uh, kids. You can go ahead and put all that in your brain. And the nice thing about that is when you have thoughts for people that are important to you in your brain, um, you can actually use them to reference things if you have events, if you're doing research on that person, uh, even dragging, dropping cool gift ideas from Amazon. So there's a lot you can do with that. And then, of course, uh, friends, seeing how all your friends are connected, um, your team, and then, of course, uh, on a business setting, team and partners. Um, now, one of the great things about the brain is you can also assign people different thought types and also ascribe attributes to how things are related. So we'll start covering that as well. So under my team, for instance, um, you might have uh, a CEO, uh, a lot of coworkers, directors, executives, experts, managers, project leaders, and these are actually all thought types um, that you can actually put in your brain. Uh, the brain eight comes with built-in thought types. The business thought type and the one brain for everything actually have all of these thought types. So if you go into the types section here in your brain, um, this is a place where you can actually build different people types. Um, you can also set tags for people as well. Um, so how would I start to visualize people in my brain? It's, it's really quite simple. Let me go ahead and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to create my web design project here. And for this web design project, I'm going to be hiring a lot of different people. Uh, we're going to be doing some interesting things. So first of all, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, add Matt to this project. And let's go ahead and add Brigitte. Now what we can do is uh, we can actually come in here and uh, go ahead and uh, move people to wherever they want to go. So if I want Brigitte to lead this project, I might want to have her as a jump thought and or Matt to lead it. I can move Matt above or if I just want them connected laterally, I can make them jump thoughts as well. So um, there's lots of ways to change. Now the thing about Matt is he is actually part of my team. So I'm going to go ahead and connect Matt to that team thought. So you can see he's there. And I'm also going to do the same with Brigitte. So all I do is I drag from the circle of the thought, which we call the gate, release my mouse button. And I'm just going to start typing in the first couple letters. There we are. And now you can see I've got Matt and Brigitte there. Now I might want to give them thought types. So Matt is actually our director of customer solutions. So you can see we have a director thought type. So if I right click on Matt, I can create a new type of person just by going in and uh, selecting new type. Or in this case, I'm going to give Matt a director level. And you know, I can do the same thing for Brigitte, who is a manager. So I'm just going to go ahead. And now you can see I've got different thought types. 
And the other thing you can do is, of course, you can have a thought. So if I want to put Brigitte under managers, um, now I can see her here as well as here in my brain. Um, so that works out quite nicely. Now, um, in terms of this project, I'm going to start uh, creating a design document. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add an attachment. And of course, I can add any number of attachments. And I'm going to go ahead and save this into that brain. So I've just added a document. I can also go ahead and link in uh, other resources. So uh, a couple things here. I'm going to sort of be deciding if I want to outsource a lot of this or internal. So I'm building a, uh, a team of people who are um, consultants or external contacts. And then of course, I'm going to have my internal team. So I can start to organize people in many different ways. So um, for my external contacts, I actually might want to consult with uh, Dan Rasmus, who is a technology analyst. So I'm just going to go ahead and open my LinkedIn page here where I've got Dan. And uh, I've got a summary of who he is and, and what he does. And what I can do is I can drag and drop contacts from Facebook, LinkedIn, Salesforce.com, Twitter, and any URL uh, can be attached to a thought or dragged in as a separate thought. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add uh, Dan Rasmus as an external contact to this website page. So now what you can see is he's actually added in um, the LinkedIn connection is made right there. Um, I do have to go ahead and, and edit the thought name to get his name. So let me just go ahead and, and do that really quickly. So I'll just change this to uh, Dan Rasmus. And now I've got Dan's contact in as well. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the other person that uh, knows a lot about um, kind of designing sites and actually does some mind mapping is Warjack and he's actually located in Poland and I'm friends with him on Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and add him into my brain as well. So now you can see what I'm doing is I'm just building that network of connections uh, of people. So and again, the Facebook contact, he's connected there too. If I actually want to get his name, I just go into the thought menu and edit and put his name there as well. And now I've got my uh, people as well. Now let's say there's a couple other projects. Um, Wartech is also a partner. So now I'm going to have him connected under partners as well. So you can see how I've got one person effectively organized under multiple areas. Um, and this makes sense. So maybe now in terms of my project, I'm doing a couple things here. Let me just make my brain a little bigger here. So um, I can go ahead and uh, start thinking about the uh, UI design. for this as well as content for my website. So two areas of this project. So I need to go ahead and add people. So for UI design, this is something that I actually want to consult Dan with. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a connection to Dan for UI design and hit OK. And now I've got that connection to my project. So I not only see uh, you know, that he's an external contact of my company, I have him connected to what I actually want uh, him working on. Likewise, I can continue to do that. For content, I actually want to get Tracy involved. So let me go ahead and add Tracy. And then uh, Tracy actually reports to Brigitte Sen, who is a manager. So I'm just going to go ahead and put Tracy under Brigitte. So now you can see how everything kind of comes together too. And we can actually map out reporting relationships. So Brigitte has Tracy. Um, she also manages Patrick and Bill and James. So now when I look at Brigitte, I can not only see that she's a manager, she's working on my website design project, but I can see 
who she manages as well. Um, now the other thing that's kind of cool is of course you can add additional information to people. Obviously uh, I've got the uh, LinkedIn uh, page and that gets pulled up really nicely. Um, I can also add images. So if I want to copy this image and paste it so that I can get a face to a contact, let me just go ahead and paste this thought icon. Uh, I've just gone ahead and dragged and, draw and, and pasted that in. And likewise, let me just do that for my Facebook contact here to get a, a person. So let's just copy this image and paste. And of course, this is great for uh, family. Um, let's just, okay, paste thought icon uh, for family. But business contacts, it's nice as well, especially if we're uh, working remote. And in fact, um, for my internal team, let's just go ahead and activate Matt. Um, and let's go ahead and do Matt Caton. I can do a lot more here. So Matt, first of all, he's on my team, but he's also my friend. We go out um, for dinner chat about all kinds of things. So now Matt is not only under my team, but he's also under my friends. And he is also a friend with me on Facebook. So if I want to go ahead and just grab Matt's page here. Oopsie, not Matt Brown. We want to do Matt Caton here. Um, so there's Matt's page. I can also do that. So let me go ahead and get his profile in here as well. So now I've got Matt's profile and then I just want to change this to Matt's Facebook page. There we go. So now I'm sort of building my connections and, and my information about Matt. Now the other thing that's kind of cool is I can actually do a search. So if I want to see, you know, what's going on, if I want to do a web search on Matt, you know, I can see his, he's got a, a Twitter account as well and, um, you know, he works at The Brain. And so this is something as well that I want to connect is his Twitter account. So let me go ahead and put that in as well. So now you can see I've got at MS Caton as well. And when I click on this, this is going to launch his Twitter feed, which is kind of interesting. Now we actually do have uh, Twitter integration in the brain where I could do a Twitter search like for instance if I actually wanted to do a Twitter search on mind mapping I could go ahead and do that it's going to launch and preview this search and add that to my brain so um, I, we think of people connected to Twitter and so forth so uh, in fact let me go ahead and let's go back to that design project and we might use a little uh, mind mapping for UI design. So let me just go ahead and put a thought to mind mapping here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add some Twitter assets here. So um, here's that Twitter search for mind mapping. If I had a hashtag that I wanted to add, I could go and do that right away. So for instance, let me go up to options and uh, go to this Twitter search. And if I just wanted to do a hashtag mind map and then create a thought for that, I could actually do that. And what this does is this actually creates uh, a, a thought that links to that specific hashtag on Twitter. So let me go ahead and launch that. And this is nice. You can see all the people who are talking about uh, mind mapping. And of course, I actually want to connect that to Wartech because he is a mind mapping expert as well. So now I've got that connected here. And maybe uh, I want to put him under mind mapping as well. And then I'm sort of, you know, building my area. So for mind mapping, uh, I can go ahead and add a number of people in mind mapping, uh, see who's talking about what for instance, Chuck Frey. Oopsie. And so I can now just go ahead and add Chuck Frey into that. And again, so if I want to get Chuck's picture here, um, I can go ahead and, and copy and paste this 
Um, I can also uh, right click on the thought and the brain has a, a great uh, ca uh, image capture, snag it. So if I click on that, I can sort of take the area of the face that I want to get for that image and now I've got Chuck in there as well. So you can see how this comes out and of course you might as well, let's go ahead and put Dan in there as well who also knows a lot about visualization software. So now as I'm researching mind mapping, I've got my people all organized and whoever I want to use for you know particular project maybe in looking at all these experts um, you know we have decided on Dan so we've got you know Dan connected here and it all comes together and of course the nice thing about the brain is all your in your contacts um, you know can be searched so if I just want to do a quick search for uh, Dan I just type in the first couple letters of his name and, and boom he pulls up very nicely. Um, now, of course, uh, third-party contacts like Salesforce.com, you can link to their contact. Uh, Matt's actually going to show you how to drag and drop from Outlook. Um, but the, the other thing you can do in a more ad hoc way is you've got the notes area, which is just fabulous for people. So if I want to uh, uh, add a contact for this individual who is in Poland and add his, uh, his number, you know, I can go ahead and do that and just make notes here. Um, reminder to call when in Europe. So now I've got this information. So as I'm looking at external contacts, if I mouse over his name, I have his number and a reminder of, of, of what I have to do. So you can see how easy it is to, uh, you know, get started. Um, of course, there's a lot you can do with family. Um, and, and more hierarchies. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to another example. I'm going to go to the My Brain and show you a little bit more about uh, reporting structures. So let me just go to the top of this brain here. And in this particular brain we have people. So we've got Barbara Powers who is the C uh, CEO or executive connected and we're using the parent-child relationship to show how people report to other people in this brain. So from Barbara I can see that Angela, Henry, Jim, Terry, Sally and uh, another Jim all report to her and if I click on that individual I can see who they're reporting to. So for instance I can see Daniel reports to Terry who reports to Barbara and I can continue to look at everything. Now, the way you want to connect people to projects, you can do that in one of two ways. You can have them as sort of the parent. So Dan can be linked above this Ritz-Carlton project. Or a lot of times um, I like to link people as jump thoughts. So um, I have the Ritz-Carlton project under my clients and I've got what I'm doing, their, their data, their, their growth strategy and marketing presentation under that particular client and then the manager appears as a jump, you know, so that's one way to do it. Um, and this, this, that, that is the model that this particular brain is following. There are many different ways to do it. Um, so for instance, Terry, in this case, because we're visualizing a people network, I have all the people that he manages below as child thoughts, the person he reports to, above as a jump thought, and of course siblings, thoughts that share the same parent, appearing to the right, and then to the left, key things that he's working on, VP of sales, so he's immediately connected to sales. And there's, you know, there's really no right or wrong way to do it, it just depends what works for you. The reason he's a jump thought to sales in this case, in this particular example, is because I don't want to put him under here because this is all the sales information and I could put him above, but um, you know, I'd rather keep that streamlined and you know, just have the business above sales. So that's, that's sort of how we've decided. Now let's talk a little bit about thought types and changing these relationships. Um, if all of a sudden Daniel gets promoted, he's uh, te uh, thought typed as manager, but he gets promoted to director, I can simply go in and change his thought type. So I'll go to my thought types list and change Daniel from manager to director and he's no longer working at Ritz-Carlton, so I'm going to unlink that or working on that client 
And he's also not reporting to Terry. He's actually gone a little bit above Terry, and now he's per reporting directly to Barbara Powers. So what I can, I'm going to do is just go ahead and make a connection to Barbara, the CEO, and I'm going to unlink him just by uh, clicking and selecting unlink there as well. So you can see now I've actually changed the structure uh, of the brain. And, you know, the brain is really great for analyzing these types of relationships. In fact, I'm just going to make my brain full screen here so you can see what's going on. And we're sort of in standard mode, but uh, I can actually go ahead and add my distant thoughts. So I'm one level, level deeper into the brain. And that lets me see a little bit more. So in this view, I can actually see um, Sally, everyone who reports under her, and Daniel who reports under here and it also shows me who doesn't have any any team members so Harry Henry is just sitting over here so this is one view of looking at information uh, the other view that's quite uh, great for people networks is outline view so here in outline view I can actually go ahead and uh, expand and collapse different people in my team so if I want to go ahead and open anybody I can go ahead and do that I can just click the plus or minus on a thought and that will go ahead and open the area on any of these people. So I can go ahead and see who's under each person. This gives me more of a linear view. This is um, sort of, I guess if you're in HR, um, you can kind of look at this and look at this as in more of a standard org chart view, uh, if you will. And that's, that's quite nice as well. And the other thing that I can do, of course, is change this view to uh, expanded view. So what expanded view lets me do is it, let, it gives me a little bit more of a nonlinear view, which is really how people are connected. And I'm just kind of going in here and kind of moving things around so you can see how people fit together really nicely. And this also lets me do some, some linking. So if I want to link Bill to the, my usability study issues, I can go ahead and make that connection. And you can see now that Bill sort of moves into that area. This also enables me to see, you know, who has what. I can see that Jim has three people reporting and Henry has no one. So I might want to go ahead and uh, take Tim and connect him to Henry and go ahead and unlink him from Jim. So now you can see I've, I've changed this relationship here where I've, I've moved Tim to Henry's, uh, he Henry's team as opposed to keeping him there. And this is where you can kind of look at, this is especially relevant for companies that are growing uh, quickly, building different teams. You can really look at your team members, see you know, who's doing what. And of course, I'm gonna go back uh, go to new and go back to that normal mode as well and then break. Now in addition to uh, to seeing how people are connected and what I wanted to let you know is of course you can tag people with their talents. We've been talk talking about thought types but tags are also quite interesting. So just to give you an idea of what that would look like, I've got ta a tag in my brain for database programmers. So what I do is I use the brain tags to tag different talents and attributes of people. So if I'm building a team, um, you know, looking to invest in a company, um, looking to bring on a partner, I can actually search for that attribute or create a tag for that attribute and, and add that as a criteria to a thought. So for instance here, I can see uh, that Donna is a database programmer and a remote pro uh, developer and if I want to look for other database programmers for instance I can see that Sandra who reports to Bill is a database programmer and so that's great so um, so in addition to thought types for people um, let's not forget to tag people and it's very easy to tag so if I want to tag Sean Taylor for instance as a database programmer well I can right click and get to my tags this way or for each thought that's active of course there is the tag that I can utilize. So here I'm just going to go ahead 
and uh, tag him as a database programmer. And you know, I can do all kinds of things. Maybe he's a remote employee, so I can go ahead and tag that. And this is just great because when I'm looking at all the people in my brain, and I want to know who's internal, how many people do we have remote, I can just click on that attribute, remote, and this lets me know that, you know, Sarah, Sean, Ross, Lindsay, Andrew, Donna, and Michael, these are all remote employees, and, you know, if we're doing a company meeting or whatever, we need to set up uh, telecommunications for, for these individuals. Um, so that's just um, kind of one advantage of, of visualizing all that. Um, so it's very nice uh, to put these people and, again, connect them to relevant projects. Um, there's a new development project here that I can see. I've got people. Um, this is in the engineering section where we've got all kinds of people in the brain. Now, if I want to create a new thought type, um, let's say we hire Jerry Walls. And Jerry is a, um, a different type of programmer. Uh, we can just have him as a, maybe I want to just make a note that he is a back-end database programmer. So we don't have that, so what I can do is I can go ahead and just add Jerry into my brain, and then I can go to his thought, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on type and create a new type. And I'm gonna call this new type um, high-end developer and hit OK. So now for every higher end developer we hire or work with, um, I can give them this thought type. And I can also set the color. So in this brain, let's go ahead and make that sort of a, uh, maybe a, a, a light orange color. And I can also go ahead and give it an icon. So this is how we're creating a thought type. So we actually have um, a people area. So if you want to get go to people icons in the brain, you can grab one of these. But in this case, because it's a developer, I'm actually going to go into the uh, technology area and maybe just add a little um, computer beside that individual. So now I've got Jerry Walls as a higher end developer and that, that could be something that rather than just saying computer programmer, let me change Jack as well to that higher end developer. And now you can see that I've changed this thought type. And I now have this thought type as a new way to classify people in my brain. Um, so that's uh, how you would map people to projects. Um, another great application is using the brain for competitive intelligence for people and business development. So another example I want to show you is I'm just going to go to our One World social networking site. Um, we have a lot of people that use the brain to visualize the brain, actually, uh, for venture capital. So if I want to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to auto-hide this brain to the right and pull up this brain. And I'm also going to pull up Jerry's brain. Um, Jerry has a great brain uh, on people. And if I do a search for venture capital, a lot of it's going to, we're going to pull up a lot of stuff in his brain or tech firm, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, this is where you can use the brain for business development mapping. So Jerry's brain is an example, and we're happy to send this to you. It's got over 360,000 thoughts, but what's great about this is if I want to click on VC firms, I can see any uh, different funds and different capital firms and then look at kind of what they're funding. So if I click on benchmark capital, I have the partners and the people who are part of that. So if I want to click on um, Bill, I can see different articles on Bill. I can see in Jerry's uh, perspective, and again, this is his perspective on a person. Um, he's, he's seen him at different retreats, um, at different summits, so that's how he's got him organized. And you can see, again, Jerry, of course, is using some uh, LinkedIn contacts as well, and he's got Twitter connected. So this is just a great example. So if I want to see, for instance, Jerry holds annual retreats um, on all kinds of uh, tech in influencers, so you can actually click on these different people 
and see who's gone to what retreat. And of course, April, um, another uh, person is actually uh, Jerry Bell. So she, he's, she's connected to Jerry. But you can also see everything that she's, all the different conferences she's done as well. Um, and, and how they relate to other people in the spray. So this, this can be very powerful. And of course, the nice thing about the, the brain is you do have that search. So if I want to, if I'm elsewhere, maybe looking at Jerry's schedule and I just want to type in April, I can go ahead and do that. And then of course, it's going to pull up. In this case, I actually want the person in April, not the month. So I can go ahead and, uh, and, and do that. And there's a picture of Jerry and April's wedding. And of course that's under April in Jerry's brain. So it's very interesting to also see how people are connected, of course, uh, in that regard. And uh, let's just go back to the, the, the brain example here for One World Social Networking. This is an example of a tech company who's used the brain, they're setting up a social networking site, and they've actually gone ahead and mapped out their competitive landscape. So for instance, um, people who are larger than life social networking sites, photo sharing sites, genealogy sites, all this kind of stuff in their space. And the reason that's interesting uh, and relevant to this topic is if I want to see who's invested what companies have invested in, in, in a company that might be similar to what I, I want to do as a new company, I can go ahead and look at that. So in this case, I clicked on Facebook and I can see I've got in news articles that I can launch. And of course, I can just go ahead and, and launch these articles as well and look at those. But I can see in this case, I have all the investors here who have invested in Facebook. And the other thing that I can do is I can set the weighting of different links here. So in this case, this particular investor made a big investment. And then I can also look at that by area. So if I want to know re who's in California and funding versus Asia, um, you know, I can look at different people. So for instance, the Founders Fund, which also in invested in Facebook. Um, so I've got Facebook up here. And uh, I can go ahead and look at different people. So I can see that Sean Parker is not only invested in uh, Facebook, but Napster and Flexo. And I can continue to, to look at these different people in this brain. And of course, it's, it's really interesting and fun to add to all this. So larger than life social networking, I can actually go in here and add Twitter. And uh, from there, I can go ahead and add different people who have invested. So for instance, uh, I know that um, there's an individual named uh, Chris Saka. Who is an investor in Twitter? So I'm just going to start with that. And then from there, if I want to go ahead and link him, under venture capital as an individual, I can go ahead and do that as well. And the other thing that I can do, of course, is start searching on people. So um, the brain has a nice built-in search web feature, as we showed when we were doing a web search on Matt. So if I want to go ahead and do that search on this individual, I can go ahead and do that. Um, you know, if I want to grab an image, I can go ahead and copy. and paste this image as a thought icon. And uh, I can go ahead and, and grab any information on this person that I want. So maybe there's an article on Forbes that is interested if I want to target this person as an individual. So let me go ahead and uh, just continue to this site. and drag and drop that information. And I can also copy and paste information right into the notes area as well. So um, there's some information on networks and so forth. So if I want to just go ahead and actually I don't want to get all those ads, but 
to be careful what I copy here. Let me just grab this part and hit copy and go over to my notes section and paste that information. Um, I can certainly go ahead and do that. And that's going to go ahead and paste in the notes area as well. And uh, I'll have to go ahead and adjust that later. Um, but I can go ahead and, oh, here we go. There you can see the information comes in. I think I got a little bit more in there that I wanted to, but you get the idea. And so now I've got this information there. And the other thing that's cool about Chris Saka is he was actually a guest um, investor on Shark Tank which is the uh, show for investors. So if I want to go ahead and add Shark Tank to this, and uh, maybe I'll put Shark Tank as a jump thought, because maybe I want to try and get my uh, company on Shark Tank. And of course, this is all hypothetical. So now under Shark Tank, I can go ahead and add Mark Cuban. As another investor. Uh, we can add Barbara Corcoran, uh, Damien, and again, I can just go ahead and do a search. And see who I want to add. So if I want to go ahead and add these other investors as examples, I can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and there we go. And so from there, you know, I can continue to, uh, to add different people uh, in this brain and, and how they fit in. I can go ahead and add, uh, let's add one more person. And then from there, I can kind of make some decisions. So we might be getting into data security, data management, and I know that Robert Herjavec does a lot in that area. So um, let me go ahead and create an area called data management and security. And add that in. And now what I can do is all my investors um, can, that are in this space can be organized under that. So let me just go back up to uh, my venture capital, and I've got this new area called data management. So that's the other thing, and uh, actually, well, Chris Saka has done a bit of that as well. I don't know if that I'd put him under there, but just as an example, you can start moving different people, firms, or individuals who um, you know fit under these categories. And that really helps you get a broader picture of the industry landscape and you know kind of what you want to do and how to leverage these relationships and prepare you for future business, future meetings, and uh, future ventures. And I think with that, I'm going to go ahead now and pass the presenter over to Matt so he can get into uh, link types as well as some other very uh, cool examples on genealogy and, and so forth. Great. Thank you, Shelley. And uh, let's just jump right into genealogy. I saw genealogy come up on uh, a thought on one of your brains. And uh, it's obviously just a very popular topic. And what better topic to discuss when uh, talking about people networks, the ultimate people network. And I've got a couple of different examples to share with you today. But this is uh, the first one I'd like to jump right into. Uh, this genealogy brain was actually created by one of our colleagues uh, here at the office, and it's specifically on, as you can see, the House of Tudor. What better subject matter to uh, approach for a genealogy brain? And so many people uh, write into the brain saying that they're actually using the brain not only for managing their data and information and, and business processes, but also keeping track of their own genealogy. It, it lends itself very well to that environment. And here we can see um, obviously, we're not starting at the beginning. I think the first king of England was back in the early 18, or 800s. Uh, here we're starting at the House of Tudor, and I'm just going to jump right down 
and click through to uh, King Henry VIII. And you can see King Henry VIII was quite a busy guy. I'm going to expand my brain a little bit so we can get the full view of the information that we have. Obviously, we've got notes about Henry VIII down below, and we've got links to further information for web pages, a lot of Wikipedia links here. But all of Henry VIII's information and relationships are actually displayed on the screen. Now, we're broadcasting today's webinar on a very low bandwidth so that the pixels can come through and, and, and get to you. Uh, obviously, the more screen real estate you have, the better, especially in a brain such as this. But you can see I've got a lot of different thought types. So uh, for children, uh, they refer to that as an issue. So uh, Henry had three issues, three children. So I've got easy links to his children. And as you can see over on the left, links to these red links are indicating this is a marriage of Henry VIII. The green links are siblings. So the links start defining the relationship between the thoughts. And this particular view, um, it's pretty busy right now. There's a lot going on. So let's go ahead and jump into a different view that we have, different option. And this is called expanded view. And you can see what I've done here is I've actually, um, and it would be better, let me just start with a new view from scratch. So I'm gonna go into view, a new expanded view and We'll jump right back down to Henry. There he is. And notice I can actually decide where I want all of my information to go. So I'm uh, taking some of the uh, relations. There's Anne Boleyn. They had Elizabeth I, so I'll put that down below. And Mary of England was with Catherine of Argonne. So the wives are now ordered over to the left. And I've got siblings, maybe I'll keep those uh, up above and parents over to the right. So once again, it's really all about what screen real estate you have. And uh, again, I'm broadcasting on a very, very low resolution, but you can see this is really starting to take shape. Let's get Jane Seymour over there. And you can hone in on specific relationships that he has, he even has two pet links as well that you can see. And, and rather than just displaying all of these interconnected links, he was linked to these people, we're defining those relationships. And we even have dates on the links. If it's discovered that he has a new pet, let's just make it really easy. I'll give him a new pet. So I click and drag to create a new link. And let's say the pet's name is Mike. And I can actually create that thought and then define the link. So to define a link in the brain, um, you can see that when I click on a link between two thoughts, it highlights that link, it grays out the rest of the brain so that I'm really focused on the relationship between, in this case, Henry VIII and Mike the dog. So I can right click to set up an existing link type. Yes, I already have a link type for pet. If I don't, I can actually create a new type or I can click on edit link and manually type something in. I do that quite a lot in my business brain just to define a person's relationship with a project that they're working on or with another colleague. And when a link is highlighted, let's go ahead and make this a pet link. I want some more information about the relationship between uh, these two thoughts. When the link is highlighted, notice down below the thought tool tab changes to a link tool tab. I can actually add attachments specifically to a link. So here I'm not really talking about Mike the dog or Henry. I'm talking about the relationship between the two. Maybe it was his favorite hunting dog or what have you. And I can leave some notes on that link as well. So I'll even say favorite hunting dog. So just a quick little note about their relationship and notice, let's go back and I click on the Mike thoughts. There's no notes yet on Mike. I click on Henry VIII. I've got a lot of notes all about Henry VIII, but I click on the link between the two, and that is specifically showing me the notes or any file attachments that are associated with that link. So the links between thoughts can be just as powerful as the thoughts themselves. We're creating so many uh, people thoughts today and talking about the relationships and how they work with one another or how they're related to other subjects and businesses. 
but we can actually define those relationships on the link types. So let's take a, another look at the rest of this brain really, really quickly. And of course, we have a link to this brain. If any of you are interested specifically in genealogy or even the house of Tudor, um, we can actually send you this link so you can browse through this brain in read-only mode online. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And of course, I can follow this all the way down through Queen Victoria. There's a lot of information on this brain. It's very robust, but I'm just going to jump ahead to something that maybe we're all a little bit more familiar with. I'll just go directly to Elizabeth, uh, the current Queen of England. And notice I've got all of her children down below. She's married to Prince Philip. And of course, details on all the different relationships. So uh, a lot of icons, thought icons. We see pictures of all the people, but also once again, defining their relationships. And this brain will continue to grow and evolve as the family grows and evolves over the years. And uh, it's really, really just a lot of fun and a great example of how a genealogy brain could be presented. And let's go ahead now and jump over to another business example. I wanted to share a few more business examples. And I saw some questions coming in about Salesforce and online file sharing sources. So I wanted to share with you, I'm going to jump into a business brain. This is my eSolutions brain. And let's just jump right into an area. Uh, this is a software application. So I'm keeping track of my network and all of my operations within my company. And in this example, um, let's say, for example, that the Remedy application one day we come into the office and Remedy is not working. What do we do? Um, I've got everything mapped out in my brain, not only where applications are, what servers they reside on, but who is the specialist for those applications or who is responsible for rebooting and, and uh, making sure that application is accessible. And there's so much additional context just in what I'm seeing right now. I can obviously open up a document on the app history to find out if it commonly needs a reboot every Thursday afternoon because of uh, a, a database update that, that takes place. Um, I've got the specs on Remedy, so I can look up password, login, any additional information I might have access to. If that's not helping me, notice that Tanya my, is my specialist. Tanya is going to know more about this Remedy application than anyone. And you can see that I'm also linking to a user community. When Remedy is down, this directly affects our IT support team. They need Remedy to do their jobs, therefore we need to get Remedy up and running. So a few different scenarios. Obviously, I could look up Tanya, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But let's say Tanya is not available. I can see other people in her department because this is sort of an org chart. So I can uh, uh, check in with a few different people to see if they have any information. If not, let's continue following the possibilities. Uh, Remedy is connected to a database, the Remedy DB1 database, and I've got a technician there. And the manager there says, you know, I'm not getting any response from this, this database. I can't reboot it. It is remotely located in London. So I go on up the list and find the people that are working in London to find that this server is uh, currently down. The servers in London are down. They're going to be back up in an hour. So we've got our answer. We know that everything will be working within the hour, but also um, located in London is the mail serve server. And we're running a couple of different applications there, one of which is mail find. And here we see that human resources and marketing department, two different user communities rely on mail find, I'm go also going to contact Sandra Neal to let her know the London servers are down right now. They'll be back up shortly. So just by connecting the information and the people that are directly related to those pieces of information, whether it's a software app, a server, or a location, um, it's going to help me perform my job better and help the organization as a whole run a lot smoother just because I've simply mapped out people's relationships to their responsibilities within the organization. Now let's jump back over to Tanya really quickly. Uh, I said I'd talk a little bit more about this. And first off, because we did get so many questions about different types of uh, you know, Salesforce and, and, and uh, Evernote, OneNote, OneDrive, Google Drive. There's so many online information resources that are available out there. And anytime you have a unique URL, I think I brought up one example. I've got a few examples. So here I am in my Google Docs. I've also got my Google Sheets available. 
All of these, and the same is true with Salesforce or OneDrive or, or Evernote, all of those online data resources, everything is associated with a URL. So here I actually have an online document available. I can capture the URL uh, right from the browser. Most of these uh, data, online data resources have share options. So I can actually click on the share button and there you can see I can capture that onto my clipboard as well. So I can click and drag into my brain or let's say Tanya needs access to this document. So I'm gonna, I've got it now on my clipboard. I'm just going to paste the link. And there you can see it even names the new thought that it created, whatever the file was. And I can do the same for Google Docs. I could even just right click typically and find the share button. If not, I can launch the document. And the share button is always going to show up in all these different types of, of applications, sort of a universal terminology to find that share link. Again, I copy that, right click in my brain, paste web link, and uh, paste that project overview right in. So a couple of different ways to get online resources into your brain. That's also really great because here we live in uh, an interconnected world and we're dealing with a lot of different people for our business and different people use different applications. People use all those different OneDrives and Google Drives and, and so forth. And so even if I don't have an account, I'm constantly being inundated with, sure, here's the file that you needed, just log into my account and they've got a, a URL, a shared URL that they're delivering for me. So again, I bring those all into the brain. So whether it's coming from, it doesn't really matter the, the information source or location is coming from, I've got that URL, I bring that right into the brain. And Outlook is obviously a very popular um, uh, tool as well. We've got a lot of Outlook users. So we've got a very unique relationship with Outlook in the brain, a really, really great feature. And I'll share that with you now as well. So I'm gonna open up Outlook and first, I'll just go over to my contacts, since we're talking specifically about people networks. And here I've got Tanya as a contact in Outlook. Um, let's say Tanya, uh, Tanya is going to be working with Mike. So I'll grab the Mike Willis thought. And from Outlook, and this is very unique with, with just specifically the Outlook application, I can drag the Mike Willis contact directly into the brain. It creates a new thought for me. There he is. Mike Willis has got a link back to his Outlook information. So it's going to launch his contact. But also notice down in the notes, it actually pastes his information for me into the notes. So this is all searchable for me now. I can take my Outlook contacts, the ones that are important to me, bring those into the brain and it's instantly indexed and therefore searchable. So I can do a search within my brain for Mike at any time and get directly to that thought. Or if I know his email address or, or what have you, I can just type in a few letters and go directly to that, to that note uh, for Mike. Now, Tanya, I can drag and drop to an existing thought. If I drop it on an existing thought, it's not going to append the notes. I already have notes for Tanya, so it's not gonna append those or overwrite them, uh, but it will give me the link to Tanya. So I'll just drop her down below, and uh, there I've made it a grandchild thought. I wanna change that relationship. You can modify those um, uh, changes at, at any time. You drag and drop something to the wrong place. So there's Tanya, and of course, there's her notes down below. And the same is true for this feature, how we embed the content into the notes automatically. Uh, in Outlook, we do that for emails as well. So let's say Tanya is uh, researching, and here you can see, once again, with the link types, I know what her job responsibilities are for some different tasks. And here she is uh, for the world ad campaign and for some research. Maybe she's collecting a couple of different email flyers to uh, emulate for this particular client. She really likes the layout of REI or I like it. I wanna share that with Tanya in our next meeting. So I'm gonna grab this email, drag and drop it right into the brain. And it's always going to name the, the content that you're dragging and dropping into, whatever the title is, title of a URL, the title of the contact, in this case, the title of the email. Uh, so it doesn't matter what the uh, title is, I'm just gonna give it a label of create layout ideas for our customer. So I really like the layout of this particular email and notice once again, 
it really does its best to, to grab all of that content. All the graphics are all there uh, down in the notes section. Now, of course, the body of the text, any content in that email goes directly into the notes. Again, that's a unique feature that we have specifically uh, with our Outlook integration. So drag and drop that in and have access to, uh, to that information down below as well. And then finally, I just wanted to share with you, let me just come back to the, uh, the time you thought, talking just a little bit more about these link types of relationships between thoughts within the brain. Let's say Mike is going to be uh, Tanya's assistance for any projects that she's working on. I really want to walk you through step by step so you can get a feel for using these link types. Again, we click on a link to highlight it and bring focus. And maybe this is just going to be a temporary uh, solution to the project that they're working on together. Mike will be reporting to Tanya for six months. So just sort of a trial period to see if they work well together for uh, doing the marketing that they're doing for our different clients. I'm gonna timestamp that, so I really, really love to use that timestamp feature uh, whenever I'm taking a, a note. And in this case, I'm just talking about the relationship between the two. Mike has all his contact information. Maybe I'm gonna be setting up his tasks for jobs that he needs to do. And Tanya is, uh, is going to have her own notes on her thoughts but here I have the link between the two highlighted. So again, that note is saved on the link between the two thoughts. And I can just mouse over the link to see those notes down below. And then finally, Mike has a very unique attribute. Mike speaks Portuguese. They're gonna be working on an international project together. And this is something that I like to do with people within my brain as well. I like to point out their attributes. What do they bring to the team? They're a good designer, uh, they're an artist, they used to work for uh, previously for a particular client, so they have some insider information. In this case, he speaks Portuguese. So I have a thought tag called speaks Portuguese. And I'm going to check that off and simply tag him with that speaks Portuguese thought tag. Now, the reason why I do little things like this, and you can make these tags be anything you like, whatever is important to you and within your organization. But for this particular reason, I'll do this so that when I'm working with even another client, uh, I've got a lot of international clients, and I get an email in Portuguese, sure, I can drop it into Google Translate and do my best, but if I'm not really understanding what someone is saying or why they're saying it, I might want someone with a little bit more knowledge to say, oh, that's just a, a catchphrase in Portuguese to, uh, to tell you that you're doing a great job or something like that. But I need to find someone in the office that actually speaks Portuguese. So I'll actually click on this thought tag and there are my three people within my organization that all speak Portuguese. Uh, Ralph is a director. He's a really busy guy. I don't want to interrupt him with this email that might be just about uh, nothing or just a friendly, have a great summer. Um, Bill is a manager and Mike, as we can see, is the new assistant to Tanya. So maybe Mike has a little bit of extra time. He's the person that I'm going to go to to uh, help me translate this particular message. So thoughts Tags are also great ways to add attributes to people, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are to help your organization run better. And I hope we've shared with you today, I see that we're coming up, we're over the hour now, with you some great examples of how you can really add more power, more information to your brain by incorporating your people networks into the brains that you're building. And with that, Shelly, I'll pass it back over to you to see if we have any additional questions. All right, great. Yes, uh, well, a lot of requests for the tutor's brain. Um, so I did mention if you go ahead, um, I think we have that published too, so we can tweet out the link to, to, to just view that online. And if you actually want the brain zip, um, just hit reply to your GoToMeeting invite, and we will go ahead and email you that. But yes, um, this is the online version of it, which you might just want to browse through it for ideas for your own genealogy. Um, if you actually want the brain zip, they're more than happy to send that to you. Just uh, hit reply to your webinar invite and we'll get that up to you. Likewise, the first brain, people networks with all those people types, I'm happy to share that as well. And somebody asked for the one world social network game. 
Um, yeah, there really wasn't any brain today that I can't share with you. Jerry, someone asked for. Um, Jerry's is available only online. If you go to webbrain.com slash explore, his is the featured brain, but we can also email you that link and we will tweet that out. So just lots of examples. And then um, just, I think I covered most of the questions, but let's just go through a few in the Q&A. Um, a quick question from Roger on dragging and dropping or working with Apple contacts. I know we're both presenting on Macs today, uh, Matt, or sorry, on PCs today, but uh, Matt actually does work on his Mac. Uh, Mac. Do you have any um, recommendations for working with uh, contacts on, from, on the Mac? Absolutely. Mac, uh, the way it's been integrated into a Mac is actually through your search. When you're doing a search in your brain, um, you're actually searching uh, through, or the brain is using Spotlight to search through your contacts, your uh, uh, email, and, and iCal. So your search results, uh, when we do a search, if I just do a search quickly, you'll see that on a PC, when I do a search, my search results are going to be broken up into two main sections. Here's my thought matches. Down below are all my contact, contact matches or content, excuse me, a Mac is going to have a third section down below, and Spotlight is going to be searching through all of your contacts and so forth. And there's a couple of buttons there where you can click to uh, preview that contact, is that the right one, or link that contact directly into the brain from the search results. So the integration is a little bit different, and there is a great tutorial on that. So if you go to our tutorial section um, on the brain, so the brain, there's a support button, and go into our tutorials. We have specifically some Mac integration tutorials that will that will uh, walk you through step by step that process. All right, great. And then another question earlier on about the tools area and just resizing the display as far as advanced uh, uh, viewing for your notes and your your tabs below versus our standard view also. Absolutely. Notice that you can click and drag to really focus, bring your focus. I'm working on the search right now. I want to see these search results. I can make it a little larger. Let's just go full screen. I double click on the search tab, and now I can really scroll through all my search results. If I find what I'm looking for, I can click on that thought, and when I minimize the search tab, I double click again, I'll be on that thought, connect power supply to cable. So all those uh, search results are, are actually connected to their thoughts. You can get directly there. And we're no longer focusing on the search so much, so I can start to minimize that just a bit. A lot of features that you can do, um, you can click and drag a tool tab so that you can really get the layout of the brain the way you want to make it work. And of course, in the end, if I try a few things, I drag and drop reports, let's merge reports. And see, I want, as I click and drag, it's going to highlight where it's actually going to go in the end. So there, I've got reports right in the middle. Now it's a little too busy. I just want to get right back to the basics. I'm going to go up to Options and reset my tools layout. The other option, Advanced Tools Layout, I pop these windows out into floating windows. If you've got two or three monitors and you want to line up the structure of the, your thoughts in one uh, area, your notes in another area, another tab for something else, you can do that in the advanced tab layout. But for now, I'm just going to reset my tools layout, and I'm right back there in the brain. And I did see, I started responding to someone that says, oh, I only have one, uh, rather than having all these tabs down below, I only have one, like the note tab maybe, appearing down below. It's quite possible you're actually in the online version. You may have noticed that the two look very similar. So here I've got my brain online. This is uh, the tutor brain, once again online. And we can go to my tutor brain on the desktop. The desktop application does have more features available. So the desktop application has the calendar. You can run reports. You can access quite easily all your thought types and tags. A lot of additional features in the desktop app. It's quite possible because they look so similar, they're actually creating a brain and browsing through the brain on the online version. I can still create new thoughts. I can drag and drop. Uh, this brain I only have read-only access to online, so I, I can't modify it there. But uh, if you've got editor access, obviously to your brain you're creating online, there's a lot of the same possibilities and capabilities there, but there's even more on the desktop app. So be sure to visit our download page, download the brain, install it on your machine, 
for all the possibilities and capabilities. All right, great. And we have a question from Jacques. Uh, is there a tutorial on thought, thought tags, thought types, their similarities and differences, and when to use over the others? So we will show you the Brain Tutorials page, which is an excellent resource. And then beyond that, um, we're, we're over the hour, but we let, we'll spend a couple minutes after that just talking a little bit about a thought, a type, and, and going over those differences. Great question. Great, yes. And so here I am uh, in the support area of our website on the tutorials page. And yes, we've got specifically videos on thought types, thought tags, and down below are my link types as well. So the key differences between them, and this is outlined in the videos, uh, but for a high-level overview, the, the key difference between them is first, you can only create, let's jump back here over to the e-solutions. You can only create one thought type for a thought. It can only be have one thought type. So Tanya is a manager. So that's her thought type. And if, uh, as Shelly showed us earlier, she is promoted or moves to a different department, what have you, we can always go back and change that one thought type to define her role. But she may have many different attributes, and that's where the thought tags come into play. So multiple thought tags can be associated with Tanya. And you can actually turn thought tags on to visualize them in the brain. I'm going to go up into options, and in my preferences, I'm actually going to uncheck this hide tag hints and say OK. And now for Tanya, I am going to actually specify uh, that Tanya is in the New York office. So I simply tag, check this tag. Yes, she's in the New York office. And, you know, I like to keep track because it's an international company. I'm keeping track of who can translate for me and, and who speaks with which language. Tanya speaks French. I'll even go a little bit further. Uh, I need to sit down and talk with Tanya and Rick um, about moving her into a higher role at the organization. So uh, that conversation is going to happen with Rick. And so I've checked this box, talk with Rick. So three separate tags, action items or information or attributes that I need to know about Tanya, the manager, thought types, and tags. Those are two different, those are sort of a couple of options that you have for how you decide to name your types and tags or utilize those features. It's really up to you. I've spoken with customers that only use thought types. They want the graphic. They want the uh uh, the little hint or the, the label that shows up when you hover over the thought. And then again, I've spoken, spoken with customers that only like the thought tags. They don't really use the thought types so much. They focus more on thought ta tags because they're assigning multiple tags to a single thought. So, and of course, I can always click on those tags. And next time I talk to Rick, these are the three different subjects that we need to, uh, to discuss. So there's a lot that you can do with those thought types and tags, and it's really just finding a way to make those features work best for your environment. All right, great. And then just a question on a link types. Is there a way to search or aggregate or even do a report on link types? Absolutely, and reporting is the way to go. So I am going to run over to my reports, and here once again, Another great reason why you should use thought types and tags. Um, let's say, for instance, I have tons of different ad campaigns. So my ad campaigns are going to be peppered all throughout my brain under the client that they're associated with. I don't want a single thought called ad campaigns and I throw them all in there. I want to thought type my ad campaigns and have them appear under client A, client B, client C, and so forth. I can now run a report and find all of my thoughts I don't have many of, of that particular thought type, but there are all of my ad campaigns. Or another thought type, here are all of my, um, let's go down to managers. So I've got quite a few different managers at my company. And again, they're in an org chart throughout their different departments. But I can get to those very quickly and easily by running reports and finding the specific manager that I'm looking for. And the same is true for all of my link types as well. So finding all thoughts that are have some type of link as assistant. There they are, and all I need to do is click on one. So reach out is the name of an ad campaign. And Steve Gibson, he'll be in the report as well. So any thought that contains a link that is typed with a specific type when I'm doing, running my report, 
will show up in the uh, results list. So the reports are the, the best way to do your searches or aggregate information from link types that you're using. All right, great. And I think that concludes uh, most of our questions. Um, so, you know, today's session was all focused on people uh, connecting people to information. For those of you that are new to the Brain Technology uh, software, just downloaded it, I want to let you know about the Brain 101. Uh, we have that class every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and that is tomorrow. Um, so do go ahead and attend that. And I think with that, we're going to close today's session, and, and so you guys can start mapping your own networks. But before we do, Matt, any final words of, of wisdom on mapping out people uh, in the brain? Sure. It's a fantastic way to get more information out of your brain, to connect all of your people to the events and projects that you're working on. So I hope you found something useful and a new way to build out your existing brains. Or if you're just getting started, Again, please join me for the Brain 101 tomorrow. I'll be hosting, and it's a really great way to start using the, the application from scratch. We sort of had a topic-specific, high-level uh, overview of just some of the features today, and tomorrow I'll be focusing on getting started from scratch, so please join us for Brain 101 if that interests you. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Remember, everything's connected. It's time to see those links, so go forth and start to uh, adding those people to your brain, and we look forward to uh, chatting with you on our website. Calling, you can call into the brain or attend uh, any one of our events. We have several events throughout the month um, to help you make the most of your brain. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.